All right, so I've had some people ask how I create the cutouts for the Yeti um, in order to do the sandblasting. Basically, I use the Silhouette, which is a, another machine that cuts out uh, images on a you know piece of paper, in this case, vinyl. Um, it's like the Cricut, but instead of installing cartridges, you can design the, the designs yourself, so you can create things a little bit more you know abstract instead of just a cookie cutter, you know, fonts and pictures and images that are standardized on a cartridge that they would sell you. So I can go to anything like uh, Google. So in this case, um, I've gone to, uh, to Google and I found this image off of a website. And what I did was right click and, you know, save this image as and put it on my desktop. Um, so now it exists on my desktop down here. Uh, what I'll do is open up Adobe Illustrator. Uh, I, this is not a free program. This is something you have to pay for, but I'm sure there's other ways to do this. So once I open up Adobe Illustrator, I can just create a new file. It doesn't matter the size. Um, and I've got a blank sheet of paper here. Uh, what you want to do is go to File and Place uh, and find the image that you have. So I'm going to place the pirate image and just place it. Uh, now what this does is it's still in JPEG format, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's JPEG. So now I have to create it to a vector format. A vector is basically, no matter how wide, you know, how big or small I make this, it maintains its resolution. So it turns it into curves and shapes and, you know, things like that instead of um, you know, this color exists at this exact point. Um, so, you know, spot number one is black, spot number two is, you know, white. It just stops all that. Um, also notice that the image is a silhouette, just black and white. It's the easiest to do. Um, you can, you know, go on any paint program and turn it into a black and white, uh, you know, if you can get it there. There's also some things you can do with Adobe Illustrator uh, with this image tracing up here. Um, you can change your image tracing to any one of these uh, options. So I can go to like high fidelity photo, but that would keep all my colors. So if I had like you know 20 million colors or whatever, um, all those colors would be maintained. Uh, whereas if I go to you know like say three colors, or in this case I'd want a black and white logo um, or a silhouette, you know play around with these and see where they go. So like I can go with silhouette. And I can watch how my image changes. And you saw how some of the edges got rounded, and some of you know um, some of the shapes changed just a little bit. So maybe I don't like that result. Um, so I would uh, go back into this and choose maybe a black and white logo. And again, you watch it change just a little bit. Let me go back to um, let's see, undo this and undo that. All right, so I'm back after my screw up. I basically hit control Y, which I thought was the redo button, but that turns out I forgot that in Adobe, that's where it gets rid of all the colors and it's just the vector layout. And since I hadn't, I don't have a vector on the page yet, it's still JPEG, I couldn't see anything. It was just a white page. So my fault, I thought I was zoomed in. <laughs> um, so anyway, so go back to this. So let's go to image trace and go to black and white logo instead. And you see how that just basically shifted it just a hair, but all the shapes maintained their clarity. Um, so what I'm going to do is drag this over uh, and keep it on my my background. I can also um, resize this and do whatever I want to it after a while, but you can keep it and keep it as big as you want right now. It doesn't matter. Size does not, not matter in this case. So what I'm going to do is after I'm happy with you know which option I picked the you know option for the uh, tracing, I'm going to go ahead and hit expand. Now expand, you'll notice it had a white a blue line going across this. Now it's got a bunch of blue dots going around the outside, so it's turned it into a vector. So now it's got all these points and there's information like hey be a straight line here, hey be a curved line between these two points. We'll, you know program will keep that. If I wanted to stretch something, I could. Um, you know, grab a tool over here, um, grab a pen tool, I believe, and, you know, see, subtract an, um, subtract an image or I could stretch it or, you know, whatever the case may be. So after I'm sitting here looking at this, I have the option, uh, if I didn't like 
you know, say the way the bandana came across, I could select this tool and grab just this anchor and like stretch it off to the side, do whatever I wanted to with it, you know, etc. Um, so I could change the image. But I want this image just like it is um, when it first comes out. So a couple things you'll notice. Um, there are multiple pieces. So like the bandana is listed here. Um, but if I hover, uh, I can see there's another image just underneath it. Um, so sometimes your images, when, when they're here, they split into multiple pieces. So um, let me remember how I do this. So yeah, so what I did was I clicked, I'll do that again real quick. So there's a white box, if you see, around this. This is my artboard, uh, the total image that I'm working with. It has to be inside this box in order to print it. This box here on the outside is the image box. So if you imagine there's a black section and there's a white section. Well, this white section I want to get rid of. I want it to be totally translucent, be clear. That way my machine doesn't cut it out later. Um, I don't need the box. It would just waste paper. It would waste, you know, cut basically. So I'm going to go through and delete that. Now if I click on this and drag it off again, you'll notice there's no, there's no image here. Okay. So remember the before had a bandana cut out right here uh, in white that matched this black one. So I'm just going to go back and undo that so where it's back in place. So now I've got all this. All right. So now that I'm, I'm happy with my image and I'm happy with the shape, um, I've gotten rid of the background, the, the white square that was going around this, um, the, that was a direct opposite of the black. I now have to go in and change the layers. Now this is something I learned from somebody else, you know, Google's their friend, but how to turn a Adobe Illustrator uh, image into a, something that Silhouette can actually cut. And that's actually called a DXF file. Uh, and I'll go to layers. In order to go to DXF, you have to get rid of the grouping. And you'll notice that all this stuff is grouped. So I have to make these things not be linked to each other. So I believe I, let me see, if I select everything in the image and right click and ungroup, you'll notice that all these got shattered into their own thing instead of being in just one group. So I'll, I'll redo that really quick. If I see right now they're grouped and here's all the pieces, okay. Um, I'm going to leave it like that. And I come over here, I select everything, and right click and ungroup. And you see that the group disappears and everything shatters out into all the pieces. So um, the bandana is one piece, the, uh, you know, the chin you know, is one piece, this piece of a sword is another piece. Um, and you can see all of them here. So this is the website that I uh, I found out all this info on how to switch to a DXF. So if my description is lacking, feel free to look at this page. But basically uh, how I found it was you can throw in a DXF AI uh, silhouette. Um, and it'll be the second, at least for now, the second uh, link is Illustrator Designs in this Silhouette Studio. It's from Hod hodgepodgepage.wordpress.com so of course a good uh, good find so what they do is they show how they take a silhouette and throw it into a cut pattern and you know 
step one through six, follow it, do it, done, you're all, you're all pretty. So number one is create your desired design, save it as an AI file so you don't lose your work. Number two is make sure all the f uh, shapes are no fill, no stroke. So I need to go do that. Um, I also need to ungroup everything, which I just did. So uh, don't hit save, choose export, and export it to a DXF. Then send it over to um, Silhouette and open up your st Silhouette Studio, the program that comes with the Silhouette. Open up your DXF file, um, make sure nothing's missing, and print to your Silhouette. So that's how easy this is. Um, all right, so now all I have to do is I've already ungrouped and everything's over here. I'm going to select everything again and I'm going to get rid of my colors. So now you'll notice that, you know, my foreground is clear, my background is clear, and uh, you can see that over here on the left. So the red line over white basically means that it's translucent. So I've got clear over clear and I'm done. So now I can actually send it over. So let's export and we're going to label this as uh, Pirate 1 and it's a DXF file. Auto it's an AutoCAD interchange file or a DXF file. I'm going to label it as Pirate 1 and export it. Now I don't change any of the settings, I just leave it as is. And now I should have on my desktop right here a DXF file. So this DXF file I'll be sending off to Silhouette to print out. All right, so as far as sending it off to Silhouette, I'll send it off to Silhouette. Um, it'll be a vector file, so it's not going to be the right shape or size, whatever. Once it's in the Silhouette Studio, the app that comes with the Silhouette, I'm going to um, highlight it and resize the image to whatever size I need for that project. So if I'm going like on the side of a Yeti cup, I basically want like three and a half inches uh, tall. So basically the, you know, for a 30 ounce at least, I guess, the uh, top of the Yeti, you can measure, you know, the height and see that that's the limiting factor is the height. Because as soon as it goes onto the curved part, your image is going to get distorted. But there's a nice uh, flat, you know, vertical flat at least, um, that you can adhere to. As it goes around the Yeti, it's going to warp also, but that's understood. So we don't want it, you know, going, wrapping around two different axes. So I've opened up the Silhouette Studio and I've uh, used the open command to open up the file that I sent to myself through email. This is my wife's computer. What I end up with is the image here. Um, I went ahead, this is a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of paper, which basically represents the paper that goes into the Silhouette. Um, so what I've got to do now is make it the right size. I can't fit 12 inches on a Yeti cup. So I'm going to highlight everything and you'll notice that all this is considered different images. I mean, if you look at the sizes, 1.26 inches, 0.64 inches, you know, just for like the circle, etc. So I need to group this temporarily uh, together. So I actually ungrouped it because I was following instructions and uh, I need to regroup it just for a second. So if I group it together, now this is all considered one image. So it's basically 11 inches by, you know, 10 and a half. So if I go to the scale uh, image, uh, the scaling tool up on the upper right, I can go down here and I can choose my size. So I can choose um, for the height, I want to choose the height 3.5, because that's what I know to be the size of a Yeti uh, safely. You know, you can go up to about three and three quarter, almost four inches if you, depending on the image, but you don't want to wrap them down too far. Uh, so if I choose lock aspect, it should choose something um, comparable. So now you see the image is shrunk and I can take and I can move it to the upper portion because again, I want it to fit right about here on, on the uh, cutout. So that's about, you know, I think this is four and a half inches wide, uh, if I remember correctly earlier. So, you know, square. So it should fit right about here when it gets cut. Um, so now I've got it on the uh, layout. Um, so, and it's fine like that. Now, I forget if I need to ungroup it, but it doesn't hurt to ungroup it. Um, So it's still sitting there. 
uh, nice and pretty and it'll cut out just fine. So now if I go to the upper right, I can send a silhouette. You see all the red basically is where it's going to cut. It's going to cut where I had before. Um, and I've already loaded the paper and sized it up and angled it and did everything that I was supposed to. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. Now it says cutting. Watch. It basically goes back and forth and cuts all the lines out. So right now it's working on the other sword on the top right. So my image comes out. So if you look really close, it's hard to see, but I can see all the images that I need to. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut this down here. I'll remove all the pieces like the bandana and you know, the chin, the swords and such like that. I'll remove all those off and I'll be left with this outside, which is my protective layer. So this square is what I'll put on the cup. Um, and the, whole, the things that are taken off is what uh, will actually be sandblasted. So like I said, um, I'm basically using a uh, fine tip scalpel um, and also using a, like a pick tool to pick off these parts as I need to. So this is like the bandana that I've, I keep showing um, and you see how you end up with a, um, you know, a solid piece and you end up with the empty piece. Well, this is what I want sandblasted, so it needs to be out of the way so my sand can hit, no problem. So what I've done now is taken a piece of contact paper and placed it over top. I've also removed the vinyl off of the cutting mat so where I can actually work with it. So I'm just going to cut across here right now and pull this image up. What I'm also going to do is take the and peel this so where that the vinyl comes off and the backing doesn't. So you can see how that'll come loose. So I removed this off and uh, you can see it peeled off very easily. Uh, all the pieces are intact. Uh, nothing is peeled away from the contact paper and the backing of the contact paper is loose. So I'm gonna put this on the Yeti. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna actually put it on Orca, um, competitor company. Uh, it's what my, one of my coworkers, he wants this done. So I'm doing this on his cup. It's also stainless steel, so again, no issue. I can uh, sandblast it. So again, my image is gonna go right across here. And I actually didn't measure the orca. The orca is a little bit smaller and this is probably right at the uh, edge of what I could put on here, but he'll be fine with that. Um, so I'll go ahead and put this on here. I went ahead and put two marks just to show where the opposite side was because they've got the orca logo on this side. So I basically just went straight across and found midpoint just so I have something visual to look at. What I like to do is start from the middle and pretty much run your finger down the center and then wrap around the sides. By doing this, um, you can see like this curves underneath, like this is a smaller angle on the bottom, uh, smaller circumference on the bottom than on the top. So if as I go down, I also wanna go down and wrap it around the edges. Um, if I stick over here and then wrap sideways, it could end up rolling up or rolling down depending on the shape of the cup. So as long as midpoint is where it needs to be, these, image can, these images can be distorted just a little bit with, with okay favor. Um, so just kinda work it out. And if it buckles, I can, like if it buckles like this, I can just put a slice in there and overlap it and you won't notice the difference. But sometimes you can just press this out and it will also disappear. So I'm just gonna work this in. I've got two really good examples of it bubbling up. So this right here doesn't count because it's on the edge. And I'm just gonna put tape over this side anyway. So what does matter though is right here on the inside and right here. So I'm gonna show you uh, how I would fix it. Uh, basically, so I'm gonna show you how I would fix it. I also want to take this time uh, before I get too in depth with these and cut and overlap pieces. I want to take and peel the contact paper off and just leave the vinyl in place. All right, so now, now the contact paper is actually off. The con uh, 
now the contact paper is off and I've, I've removed it so you've just got the vinyl on the cup and you can see right here where I overlapped the uh, the two and if you do it at a point the point you can't really tell the changes because that's what you're visually going to see but the image did get warped and because now the the bottom is longer actually because it's going around a smaller circumference so I'll do the same thing here where I'll take a splice and I'll, I'll move it over. I can also do it to right here at the chin if I wanted to. So what I ended up doing was making a small cut uh, right here um, and molding these two together um, and then just making sure that this line was very clean uh, going across. I'll also take some alcohol and remove the mark that I put there. And this is the final uh, deal. What I'm going to end up doing is putting painter's tape, like you've seen before on my other video. Uh, put painter's tape on this other, just where none of the overspray hits the stainless steel over here. And instead it just hits where the stainless steel is showing. It still has the horizontal markings on it because it's brushed stain steel, uh, stainless steel. Afterwards it's going to have more of a fuzzy because of the sandblasting. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, check out one of my upcoming videos, probably you might even release it today as far as uh, showing the sandblaster from the inside of the, uh, the cabinet that I made uh, out of a Tupperware container. So, thank you for watching.